Good evening. As we gather to ponder um, our reflection for this third week of Advent, just so you know, we're pre-recording this service because we're anticipating snow on Wednesday evening. So um, we hope you um, are able to be with us as we worship and that you are safe. Our theme for tonight is wonder. There is a bulletin that you can find at htluth.org if you so choose to follow along. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Stir up our hearts in wonder, O God. May we wear a mantle of praise as we delight in your gift of salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Tonight's psalm we will read responsively. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, as the water courses of the moon. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the sea, will come again with joy, joyful. Faithful God, like a grain of wheat falling into the earth, your son went into death, so that after three days the earth might bloom with the joy of his rising. Let the seeds of justice, which we plant with tears, bring forth the power of the resurrection in the places of death and despair, and gather us at last into the joyful harvest of the saints through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Our reading for tonight is from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. And a second reading from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you as faithful, and he will do this. So for this second, or this third week, excuse me, this third week of Advent, um, we are reflecting again upon John, John the Baptist, that is. John's parents, John the Baptist's parents, were Zechariah and Elizabeth. And one day, the angel Gabriel came to Zechariah as he was praying in the temple to tell him that his prayers were to be answered. Zechariah, the aging priest, and Elizabeth, long past the time of childbirth, would have a baby. Can you imagine their wonder and joy as they realized that the baby they longed for was coming into their lives? You might be familiar with the scene of a pregnant Mary visiting Elizabeth. We'll hear a little more about that this coming Sunday. The whole scene is described in the first chapter of Luke. An older pregnant woman, Elizabeth, blessing her younger cousin, Mary, also having a baby. As Mary speaks a greeting to Elizabeth, the baby John leaps in the womb of Elizabeth in worship of the baby Jesus. This is the real story of Christmas, really. It's as it begins, the story of new birth for some people, but for God's people. Not only was God birthing something fresh in Elizabeth, God was also birthing something new for Zechariah and was birthing something new for all humanity. This is why Zechariah's song from the Gospel of Luke it is often called the Benedictus, and it's one of the most beautiful passages of scripture. It reflects the fulfillment of so much longing and desire and the signal signaling that something is new and full of wonder. In Christ, all has come new and fresh. 
Let me read those words from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. They are verses 68 to 79. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that he would that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant the oath that he swore to our ancestor abraham to grant us that we being rescued from the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days and you child will be called the prophet of the most high for you will go before the lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins by the tender mercy of our god the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Can you imagine the joy of Zachariah as he's thinking about his son preparing the way for the Messiah? A sunrise or a day spring form on high. It's coming to earth. This is a new dawn. Quoting Isaiah, Zechariah says that those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death would now have a new light. Light would shine in their darkness. Zechariah now sees his story as part of God's long story. This old priest is seeing his life in a new way. He's part of that long story from Abraham to David and into this century. The long-awaited time had come. The Messiah was coming. This is the message of Christmas for all of us, really. It's not about manufacturing sentimental feelings and vain hopes of a miracle, really. It's about believing the reality that God had birthed and has birthed something new in Jesus. And because of this, God will birth something new in you and in me. And that newness is breaking out still today. And it is full of wonder. It's new in the hearts of God's people in the midst of a broken world, even in the midst of a pandemic. And we, at Christmas, sit in silence and wait in another advent when that child returns as the king to complete God's mission to restore hearts and renew the world. But in the meantime, we have the promise that God is with us. And that is also filled with great wonder. And so now I pose our questions for reflection to you for tonight. What word or image or phrase has stood out for you in worship this night? Where do you find wonder in the story of the birth of Jesus? Where do you see wonder in God's creation, in the message of God's love, grace, and forgiveness, and in the wonder of the transforming work of the Holy Spirit, and even in your own life.
rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon is drawing nigh. Up, pray, and watch, and wrestle. At midnight crumbs the cry. The watchers on the mountain proclaim the bridegroom near. Go forth as he approaches with alleluia's clear. The marriage feast is waiting, the gates wide open stand. Arise, O oh, heirs of glory, the bridegroom is at hand. The saints who hear in patience their cross and sufferings bore shall live and reign forever when sorrow is no more. Around the throne of glory shall behold in triumph cast before him their diadems of gold our hope and expectation O oh, Jesus now appear arise O oh, sun so longed for for this benighted sphere with hearts and hands uplifted, we plead, O oh Lord, to see the day of earth's redemption that sets your people free. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the health of creation, for abundant harvest that all may share. And for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Guide us waking, O Lord, 
and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Even as we wait, watch, and wonder, God is with us.